السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Today inshallah we're going to solve Cambridge exam October November 2023 paper 63 Let's start it Question 1 Hydrated aluminium chloride is a white solid When heated very strongly it produces steam, hydrogen chloride gas and aluminium oxide Hydrogen chloride gas is toxic and aluminium oxide is a white solid A teacher heated a sample of hydrated aluminium chloride using the apparatus shown. Name the item of apparatus labeled A. As we can see, A is a crucible which is usually used for strong heating. Why this experiment should be done in a fume cupboard? It is already mentioned here that hydrogen chloride gas is toxic, so that's why we have to make it in a fume cupboard. The hydrated aluminium chloride has to be heated very strongly. Describe how the Bunsen burner is adjusted to make the flame as hot as possible. To make the flame as hot as possible, we have to keep this air hole completely or fully open to ensure enough supply of oxygen. When we have enough supply of oxygen, the, we will have complete combustion. And of course, complete combustion produce much higher amount of heat than the incomplete combustion. So keeping the air, uh, the air hole open Make sure that we have complete combustion and the flame will be very hot blue flame. During the experiment, the mass of apparatus A and its content decreases. Why the mass decreases? As we can see, the crucible is opened and the steam and hydrogen chloride gas can escape from the crucible and that's why the mass gets decreased. Describe what the teacher can do to be sure that all the hydrated aluminium chloride reacts. When all the hydrated aluminium chloride react, that means no more gas will escape, no more decrease in mass, so the teacher can reheat and reweigh until reach a constant mass or until no more decrease in mass. In a second experiment, the teacher uses the apparatus here, shown in the figure 1.2, to collect the water made. So heating aluminium uh, chloride will produce steam. The steam will be collected here in the spoiling tube. Uh, it is uh, in a beaker contain ice, so of course the steam will be cooled and condensed to form water here in the boiling tube and the other gases will be for the waste gas. Number one, what is the purpose of ice? As we just said, the ice is to cool and condense the steam into water. The water collected is not pure. Describe a test that the teacher can do to show that the water is not pure. The result of your test if the water is not pure of course we can measure the purity by measuring the boiling point and here the water is not pure so the boiling point will be above 100 because the impurities of course increase the boiling point question two a student investigate the reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid and aqueous sodium hydroxide the student does two experiment in experiment one he filled the pirate with sodium hydroxide and ran some of sodium hydroxide out of the pirate. Record the uh, initial reading of the pirate. Then measure uh, 25 centimeter hydrochloric acid by measuring cylinder. Put it in a conical flask and put the flask on a white tile. Add five drops of methyl orange indicator to the conical flask and slowly add sodium hydroxide from the pirate to the conical flask while swirling the flask until just the color change. Then he record the final burette reading. In experiment two, he rinse the conical flask with distilled water and refill the burette with sodium hydroxide again, record the initial reading of the burette, use the measuring cylinder, again measure 25 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid into the conical flask, but he add 0 0.5 grams of cal calcium carbonate powder to the conical flask, swirl the flask, then stand it on a white tile before adding the methyl orange indicator and start another titration using the same sodium hydroxide solution from the pirate until just a change in color. Then he record the final reading of the sodium hydroxide. So the difference between the two experiments that in the second experiment he add just 0 0.5 grams of calcium carbonate to the HCl in the conical flask before making the titration. Here we have the burette diagram for experiment 1, the initial reading and the final reading, and also for experiment 2, the initial reading and final reading. As we can see for experiment 1, the initial reading 0 0.6, 
here it is 0.6 and the final reading 19.2 and for experiment 2 the initial reading is 1.8 and the final reading is 8 so the total volume of sodium hydroxide used in experiment 1 will be 18.6 and experiment 2 will be 6.2 State the color change observed in the conical flask at the end point in both experiments. Of course, he stopped the titration just when the color has changed. So at the neutral color of methyl orange, the starting color will be red because it is the color of methyl orange in hydrochloric acid in acidic media. It's red. And the final color, which is a neutral color, which is always orange. So the color change will be from red to orange. When 0.5 grams of calcium carbonate is added to the conical flask in experiment 2, a gas produced suggests the identity of this gas. Of course, carbonate reacts with acid, any acid, to produce carbon dioxide gas. So the gas present in experiment 2, produced in experiment 2 is carbon dioxide. In experiment 2, the conical flask is rinsed with water, but pirate is not rinsed with water. State why. There is no need to rinse the pirate with water. Of course, in the second experiment, we are using the same sodium hydroxide solution, so no need to rinse the pirate with water because we are using the same solution. Why the conical flask is rinsed with water? We have to rinse it with water to remove any residue or any impurities from experiment one. The conical flask is not dried after being rinsed with water. State how Drying the conical flask affects the volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide needed to reach the end point and how to explain your answer. Of course, the drying the conical flask will not affect the volume of sodium hydroxide used because the presence of water in the conical flask will not affect the total amount of hydrochloric acid or the number of moles of hydrochloric acid used in the experiment. So, of course, will not affect the volume of sodium hydroxide. Compare the volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide needed to reach the end point in experiment 1 and experiment 2. Uh, as we mentioned here, experiment 1 is 18.6 and experiment 2 is 6.2. So the volume is much greater in experiment 1 than experiment 2. Actually, it is three times greater than experiment 2. The volume of sodium hydroxide to, uh, used in experiment 1 is three times greater than that of experiment Why the difference in volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide needed from experiment 1 and experiment 2? Because in experiment 2, we use calcium carbonate, which react with part of the acid or some of the acid. So the amount of the acid in the conical flask decreased. That's why we need less sodium hydroxide to neutralize the acid. That's why the volume of the sodium hydroxide decreased in experiment 2. Calculate the volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide needed to reach the end point in experiment 2 if it is repeated using 0.25 grams of calcium carbonate instead of 0.5 grams. Using 0.5 grams in experiment 1 cause a decrease in volume of sodium hydroxide from 18.6 to 6.2. That means the decrease in volume is 12.4 centimeter cube. So if we make, if we use only 0.25 grams of calcium carbonate, that means half the mass of calcium carbonate that means the volume will be only half so the decrease in volume will not be 12.4 it will be only 6.2 so 18 18.6 minus 6.2 that means the total volume of sodium hydroxide used will be 12.4 centimeter cube Describe how the reliability of the result obtained can be confirmed, of course, by repeating and comparing the results or making average. Question 3. A student tests two substances, solid I and solution J. First, we will make the test on solid I. Solid I is chromium-3 sulfate. The student dissolves solid I in water to form solution I, and the student divides solution I into three portions. To the first portion solution I, the student add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise until in excess. Of course, the, the color of the precipitate formed here, chromium hydroxide, is a gray-green or green precipitate as it is written in the tables 
uh, uh, supplied with this exam, green precipitate, and because chromium hydroxide is amphoteric oxide, so it will dissolve in excess. The second portion of solution I, the student add one centimeter cube of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is used to test for halide ions and here we don't have any halide ions so the observation would be no visible change. To the third portion of solution I we will add a one centimeter cube dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate and barium nitrate is used to test for sulfate ions. We have sulfate here so the observation will be white precipitate form it. Of course, the white precipitate is barium sulfate. Then we have tests on solution J. Uh, table shows the test uh, and the observation for tests done on solution J. The student divide solution J into five portions to make five tests. In the first test, the glass rod, use a glass rod to transform one drop from solution J into a piece of universal indicator and the universal indicator paper turns red. The red color indicates that solution J is an acid. Second test, a second portion of solution J add a piece of magnesium ribbon and test for any gas produced. Magnesium ribbon disappear and there is effervescence is seen and the gas produce pop sound when tested with lightest splint. Of course, this gas is hydrogen. When a metal reacts with acid, it produces hydrogen gas and of course, it give a pop sound when tested with lighter splint. The third portion, we will add nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate. We will have a white precipitate. White precipitate indicate the presence of chloride ions because the precipitate form of silver chloride is white in color. Test four, the fourth portion of solution J, we will add one centimeter nitric acid followed by a few drops of barium nitrate no change, no visible change, that means we don't have any sulfate ions. We will make a flame test on the first and the fifth portion of solution J. We will have lilac color flame and lilac color, of course, indicates the presence of potassium ions. So we will have here in solution J, chloride ions, potassium ions, and of course, because it's an acid also, we will have the hydrogen ions. So suggest a BH of solution J, it's an acid, which is of course hydrochloric acid, so we can write BH1. Identify the gas given in test 2, as we've just said, it's hydrogen gas. And the three ions present are hydrogen ion, potassium ion, and chloride ions. Question 4. You are asked to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of decomposition of aqueous hydrogen peroxide. The aqueous hydrogen peroxide decomposed to make oxygen gas and the reaction is very slow until a catalyst is added to the hydrogen peroxide. Manganese oxide is used as a catalyst for this reaction. Plan an investigation to find how the temperature of the aqueous hydrogen peroxide affects the rate of the catalyzed reaction. Your answer should include the explanation of how your results will tell you how the rate of reaction has changed by changing temperature. That means we will make two experiments at least using uh, hydrogen peroxide with the catalyst manganese oxide at two different temperatures and we will investigate which experiment have the higher rate and study the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction. So we will measure a known volume of hydrogen peroxide using a measuring cylinder then put it in a conical flask connected to a gas syringe. We will weigh 0.5 grams of manganese oxide to use it as a catalyst in this experiment and we will add it to the conical flask. We will close the conical flask of course and measure the volume of the oxygen gas produced after two minutes. We will repeat the experiment using the same volume of hydrogen peroxide and the same mass of the catalyst but of course we will change the temperature this time, we will make the experiment at a different temperature and we will collect the volume of oxygen gas produced also after two minutes. Comparing the two volumes, the experiment that produces a higher volume of oxygen in two minutes of course has the faster rate of decomposition. Here we come to the end of our exam. Like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates. Comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.